հարգիլի բարեկամներ սպրքի ձայնը սկսում են նոր հաղորդաշար, որտեղ հայ իրավաբանները տարբեր ճուղերում կպատասխանեն ձեզ է տարգրող իրավական հարցերին։ Voice of Armenians TV is happy to announce a launch of a new segment called Legal Affairs. The purpose of this segment is to help our viewers answer their legal questions by asking our guest experts who represent different legal fields. Our first guest is Yelena Narsesian, practicing attorney of Busan and Sarkovsky Law Firm. Thank you very much for coming on our show. I want to begin our conversation by asking you a little bit about your law firm. Please tell us about your areas of your expertise. Thank you for having me. Uh, Buson and Sikorsky is a law firm located in Manhattan and it's a boutique law firm that uh, mainly specializes in real estate transactions, both commercial and residential, as well as estate litigation and estate administration. Let's talk about real estate. Whether you buy, sell or refinance your real property, you often have a lot of questions. And one of the most common questions that people ask is, do I need an attorney? Yes, uh, I did hear that question before and the short answer to your question is yes, it's highly advisable. But to elaborate on it a little bit, um, well, for those who already went through this process, they know that purchasing, selling, refinancing can be a really complex process and that consists of many steps. And I think it's really prudent of potential clients to hire a diligent professional to guide them through this process. Of course, it comes without saying that investing in real estate in most people's lives is perhaps the most important investment that they can make. Uh, people save for the entire lives to buy a house, uh, a classic consideration of an American dream. And uh, I believe that it's very important when you make that move to make sure that all the procedures are followed correctly and you have an expert standing behind you, a legal expert, an attorney that can help you to uh, go through this process and uh, make sure that everything is correct. And that leads me to the next question. To be more specific, what is the role of attorney during this process? The role of the attorney is quite important. For example, if it's a new first time home buyer, first you really have to educate them on a type of property ownership. For example, un unlike condominium or a house, uh, when people purchase a co-op apartment, they really they don't really purchase the apartment, they purchase the shares in the corporation that owns the building. So there are some details that you really have to explain to the client for that before they make a decision. And um, of course, another important step is to check the financials of the building, the offering plan to make sure that uh, financially the building is stable. And all this even before you negotiate a contract. And then the next step is negotiate, negotiating the terms of the contract and uh, working with the purchaser's bank and uh, guiding, uh, do, doing a due diligence is another obviously important step. And I just want to stress the importance of ordering uh, uh, purchasing title insurance. Title insurance is a kind of insurance that um, is offered by title company to protect the buyer. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, these are multiple steps and having a professional who can really guide you through this and make sure that the closing goes smoothly is very important. Is the due diligence for residential real estate transaction is different from one you would typically conduct for commercial real estate transaction? Yes, that's a good question. It's quite different because um, purchasing or selling a commercial piece of property is a very complex process. And in addition to what I have already mentioned for residential clients, you have to take a number of additional steps. One of them is um, to make sure that the building complies with all zoning regulations, building code regulations. Nowadays, uh, it's also very important to make sure that the building complies with Americans with Disabilities Act. And um, if, for example, it's a designated landmark building, 
then you really have to discuss this with your client, the architect, to make sure that they understand the limitations of purchasing a landmark building. If they have air rights and they were planning to build additional property you know, on top of the building, if it's a landmark building, then the landmark commission, you know, uh, might not allow them to use the full air rights available to them. So again, and yeah, I just want to stress also the importance of having um, environmental due diligence for commercial properties, which can be expensive and it's very extensive. So what, what the assessment does, environmental phase one assessment, is really um, make sure that there is no contamination in the soil, where the property is located or there is no asbestos or lead in the building. So that's a very important step and it's something that every purchaser has to discuss with their attorney. Another question that comes up is uh, what does 1031 tax deferred exchange represents for a real estate investor? It is actually a very, very important tool for um, real estate investor because typically in a typical transaction when the property owner sells the property and if he or she realizes a gain or profit then um, they have to pay capital gains taxes federal state and sometimes city so what uh, what section 1031 of the internal revenue code does it actually allows the real estate investor who wants to sell this property and purchase another investment property, which is called um, like-kind exchange, is somewhat exchanging the property to postpone or to defer the payment of capital gains. Another question is often asked by uh, sellers or purchasers alike is who pays the transfer taxes? And also, is it possible to avoid what's called mention tax? Yes, that's, that's a question, especially the question about mention tax is a question we're being asked very often. Um, so in New York, um, New York City and New York State as well, so if you're selling a property, then you have to pay New York State transfer tax and New York City transfer tax. Of course, if the property is not in New York City, then it will be New York State and um, maybe county tax or village tax if there is any. Uh, so it's typically it's customarily paid by the seller. But there is also something called mention tax. And um, this is only triggered when the purchase price is $1 million or more. And it is typically paid by the purchaser. So this law is um, somewhat antiquated. It was adopted in 1970s when actually you could purchase a mansion by paying $1 million. And, but nowadays that's not the case. You cannot really purchase a mansion for $1 million, especially in New York City. But the law is still effective and the purchasers, they have to pay. So yeah, the answer is yes, they have to pay. I understand that your firm is a multifaceted firm and it also deals with uh, administration of estates, probate of wills and kinship proceedings. Could you please elaborate a little bit more on that topic? Yes, our firm assists clients with um, drafting wills, preparing healthcare proxies, power of attorneys. If a person died and he, you know, he had a will, then what we do, we, you know, prepare all necessary documents and present the will to the court for approval. So it's called starting a proceeding in surrogate's court. And if uh, the will is approved and the executor named in the will is appointed, then that person will be managing the estate, collecting the assets, making distributions and filing you know, estate taxes if there are any. Um, so just managing the estate. But of course there is this other version when, as we know, many people don't really take care of that and they don't have wills. And if someone dies without a will, then the estate is administered um, uh, pursuant to uh, uh, statutory laws of inheritance in New York State, which means that the law provides who has a right to be nominated uh, as the administrator. Going back to kinship, not very often, but sometimes there is a proceeding called kinship proceeding, which we initiate because, for example, if the person died without uh, immediate family members, wife or children, and we don't know about certain relatives, distributees, we have to start a proceeding and to determine who are the uh, rightful or lawful distributees of this decedent. For example, if we know everything about the maternal side of this person but nothing about paternal and we have to investigate and find out who are these relatives and to establish their relationship to the decedent. 
Although your firm is a boutique firm, it's quite multilingual. Can you please explain me how does that affect your practice? Yes, that's true. We speak many languages, although it's a small firm. So, I mean, I speak Armenian and Russian, and uh, we have other attorneys who speak Portuguese, Spanish, French, um, and Polish. And, um, of course, we, we benefit tremendously from that because we can really assist a very wide range of clients. That would include assisting international investors who want to buy or sell real property, as well as dealings with estates because if, you know, if the person dies in New York, a first generation immigrant and all his relatives are abroad, then it really helps um, members of my firm, they travel to Greece, to Lebanon, to Brazil very often to locate certain relatives in small villages or to go through certain vital documents like birth certificate, death certificate. So uh, yes, it helps tremendously and I, I've been asked on a number of times to assist clients who have businesses in Armenia or they need assistance with Eastern dialect and that's really something you know I can really help them with. This concludes our conversation. I'm sure it was as informative and interesting for our audience as it was for me. Uh, thank you so much and best of luck to you. Thank you. That concludes our first segment of Legal Affairs. Please stay tuned as next month we're going to have an immigration expert to answer many of your pressing questions regarding the latest immigration laws. You can email us your questions at this email address on your screen and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.